Welcome to part three of the day zero to five lactation video series with liquid gold concept. In the last video, we discussed progesterone's role in lactation. In this video, we will look deeper into the transition from colostrum to traditional milk. After the delivery of the placenta, the mammary gland epithelial cells senses that progesterone is gone and begin to rev up the molecular machinery required to produce a lot of lactose, a lot of fat, and all the proteins the baby will need to grow and fight off disease. Simultaneously, hundreds of other important proteins and molecules are made that allow for the epithelial cell to become a lean, mean, milk-producing machine. To show how this happens, let's zoom in on these epithelial cells. As a quick review, the epithelial cells line the alveoli of the mammary glands. The lumen is the space inside of them. The side of the epithelial cells that is closest to the lumen is called the apical side. The side that is closest to the blood is the basal lateral side. During pregnancy, the mammary epithelial cells are somewhat disorganized without a strict unidirectional flow. The machinery is all there. They can produce milk, but they're not very efficient at doing so. There's no baby, so there's no need for copious milk production. Colostrum, remember, that first milk that moms start to produce in the second trimester is very high in sodium. That's because our other body fluids are also high in sodium, like our blood and our interstitial fluid. And that same sodium can easily travel in between the cells and into the colostrum, which is in the lumen space. As soon as those progesterone levels drop, special proteins are synthesized that form tight junctions, which line the apical or the top side of the epithelial cells and form a very strong barrier. This forces certain transport proteins to one side of the cell or to the other. Now the cell can only pump stuff in from the basolateral side out through the apical lumen side and into the lumen. This is one of the main reasons we don't leak breast milk into our blood and urine. A biochemical marker for this transition is the disappearance of that sodium in the breast milk. Once the tight junctions, which act like gates, close, the sodium cannot easily travel in between the cells anymore. We can easily measure the rapid decrease in salt content in breast milk in those first few days. The other marker for this transition is an increase in lactose and fat globules in the milk. These increases are caused by that strict unidirectional flow that is brought upon by the formation of these tight junctions, as well as the growth and expansion within inside these cells. So much growth has happened that the nucleus is actually pushed down towards the basal lateral side of the cell in order to accommodate all of the organelle growth. This is creating that efficiency, that lean, mean, milk-producing machine. And that's how tight junctions help mammary glands transition from making colostrum to making milk. For more information, check out the links below. Check out more breast health talks on our YouTube channel and visit our website to learn more about our amazing lineup of breast health education products. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below.